Welcome to the show. We about to break down power episode five uh, for season two. I'm here with the lovely Gina and Kelly Lee. What's up, Gina? How you doing? Hi, Jay. Hi, Kelly. Happy Sunday. Hey, child. Hey, hey, happy Sunday to you too. Kelly, how you doing today? I'm doing okay. Happy Sunday to you, Jay, Gina, everybody in the chat. Mm. Raising Pain and Power Universe, what's up? All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so uh, uh, and a lot of people, it seems, are on the fence with this episode. A lot of people love it. Some people are saying that it was boring or slow or not enough action. Uh, Gina, let me start it off with you. Um, after letting the episode marinate a little bit, maybe seeing it again, what are your thoughts on the episode and and how you feel about it? I still enjoyed the episode. For me, personally, I didn't find it boring. I feel like the pace is going good. And I'm here for the ride. Okay. All right. Kelly, what's up? What you uh think about this uh episode now that it's had a little bit of time? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I still like the pace of it, as Gina said. I think it's doing good. I think that the perception of episode five in the Power Universe has people hyped that it's supposed to be some big blah, 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 blah scene, you know? And... Uh, I think it's telling a really good story. We're going to get the excitement, but I think this episode was good. It was it, it gave it gave me everything. Give me some humor. Um it showed that Rock has reason. She doesn't carry on with everything. You know, it it gave me a, I liked it. I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see more. They're telling a good story. Yeah, and uh I agree. I think the storytelling is good. Um I like the episode uh Kelly got a point. Some people expecting maybe a little more. Um, with the season five, they did kind of start that, what, mid-season finale kind of thing. So now you got people kind of expecting something like that now. And uh, so to be just a normal, regular episode five that's just continuing the story, Mm-hmm. You know, maybe some people was let down by that, but uh, overall, I liked it. I thought it was a good episode. I thought it, you know, continued the story, and I thought it had a little bit of action. Uh, no, it wasn't a whole lot, but it had a little bit enough to keep you going. Um, so <laughs> maybe it was at the end. That's the problem, and nosy ain't really getting nothing but a kneecap. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happened. Uh, Bobby Bailey, what's up? Bobby Bailey said, I think all the lies is going to turn Kanan into a monster. Gina, what you think yes, about Bobby. that? I agree, Bobby. I totally agree. Because that's all she does. La, 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 la. She lie like a Persian rug. <laughs> <laughs> Right, definitely. What you think about all the lies and everything that she got uh, in Kanan's head, uh, Kelly? Was is that? I agree. I agree with Bobby. I agree with Gina. She is awful with them lies, and they just keep coming and coming and coming. She's not even giving nobody a break to be like a, a, a period a good mom. You know, no. Even in good mom zone, it's covered in lies, and no, and no answer, no justification, nothing. Yeah. And she does this so effortlessly, like, oh, oh, you you coming at me? You questioning me about this lie? Oh, what do you mean, lie? <laughs> <laughs> back to back to back, to back. Yeah, and I think that uh, that probably will have an effect, definitely on how <clears throat> he will be able to lie to anyone about anything very easily. Um, you know, if you grow up with your old mama lying to you about serious stuff, um, then you can lie to anybody, you know, so no loyalty. So anyway, um, do you think that Rock means well with all her lies trying to protect them or at this point, should she just be straight up with him 
and tell him the truth because I mean he say he want to be in the game. You want him in the game, then what's up? Tell him, uh, Gina, what you think? Personally, I do feel like she should be straight up because how are you wanting him to get in this business and you're constantly lying to him? He don't know what's around the corner. He don't know what's down the block. It's like you're always lying. He don't know what he's up against. He thinking stuff is cool. You got mobsters after you. He thinking stuff is cool. Like you, you the big boss lady. He doesn't know that this dude that you helped, you know, had him help you dump, try to assault you. And that's why he's going in the ground. Right. I feel like that would have been understandable. She could have been able to tell him that. Yeah. I agree. It's not something that a child want to hear, but, you know, I'm not just no monster. This dude, I was trying to do it the correct way. And this dude tried to attack me. But your uncle had to handle it. So I feel like she needs to be upfront with him because how you bringing him into this that he don't know what's going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's always in danger then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she probably thinks she's doing the best to protect him, but at this point, giving him information is a better way to protect him than keeping information or information away from him. Uh, Kelly, what what you think about the way she handling all this with the information and and Canaan? Can he can he handle the truth? Yeah, he can handle the truth. Um, I agree with Gina, but Rock is uh, one of those minds that she's in control. So she's never going to be truthful with him, even though she should be, because I thought about the same thing Gina just said. Um, the guy, the guy who they had to bury, he definitely came at her. He tried to assault her and boom, my, you know, your uncle took care of it. He, he would have understood that he would have been compassionate towards her, more understanding and even open up to her a little bit more. She's not doing the stuff, the right things to open the lines of communication. Rock is a dictatorship. Okay, it's do as I say, and she comes up with the plans, and she is she is navigating all the pieces on the chessboard. That's it. Yeah. So she's not going to tell you what she don't need to tell you, mm-hmm. or she don't think that she needs to tell you. Okay, I definitely see that's how she operates. So yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Um, we had a lot of stuff that we covered yesterday on the first reaction. Uh, but one of the things that we didn't get to cover was Lil Burke. Um, to, what's up with Burke and all this investigating the Howard? And is that going to make it a problem between them? Is she going to maybe bond with Howard? Um, what you think is up with her? And is she going too far? Gina, what's up with Burke and, and all this snooping around? I feel like she definitely is crossing the line. Understandable, he's your partner, but he's not questioning the issue. Yes, it's unfortunate that he was shot. Good night, baby. I love you. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> My son is going to bed. Good, good but, mom. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's unfortunate that he was shot. But in the end, you got to look at the bigger picture. The shooting saved his life. So he has no qualms about it. Now, if it was somebody else that did it, maybe he would want them to go to jail. Mm-hmm. But in this case, he's at peace with it. And I feel like she should also be at peace with it. It didn't happen to you. She's going about it all wrong because the way that she came at this lady, I did not like it. Threatening to take her child away from her. Yes, yeah, she may not have the most upstanding job, but she's trying to, you know, whatever she's doing, is keeping the roof over her son's head, putting clothes on his back, food in his mouth. Yeah, it ain't like she a so junkie she prostitute. As a right. Yeah. It may not be the most upstanding job, but hey, we don't know her background. We don't know how old she was when she had a child. If she was successful in school, maybe she feels like that's the job that's going to give her the money that she needs. And she's a single mom as well. So the way that she came at her, and put her back up against the wall like that, like, oh, you're going to give me the information. You're going to tell me I'm going to take your baby away. Yeah, what? that was crossing the line. I believe it like that. Kelly, what's up? What you think about how Burke is going all in behind Howard's back, digging in his past as if he's the criminal, 
Um, what 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 do you think about this and how she uh, treated this woman here? First off, she don't got no work to do. Like every time we see her now, is you know Howard is her case at the end of the day. Like what what you, you're not doing your work, you're not protecting and serving. So that's number one. Two, this lady's not. It doesn't appear to be a street walker how's she in an interrogation room and you interrogating her hard body about her partner like i thought that that was not a case i'm so confused about it and everything else i agree with gina right she is taking care of her kid by any means necessary right and uh, you could see that from the conversation she had with howard that she has him removed unlike rock her kid is removed from her right so and she had she had the whole kit to show that this is what that she's a barber right so she's protecting her kid now you got this reckless woman who's freaking her head is stuck up Howard behind basically because clearly she ain't doing nothing else and you put in my child up I mean I wish that girl would have been like mm-hmm call Howard now I know, I really right? That I I was thinking that she was gonna say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I I am glad that she told Howard in the end. I'm really happy. So at least he knows that this crazy lady is interrogating his people hard body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm glad that she told him as well. Even though he kind of took it the wrong way. And, uh, yeah, I get that he was upset that she told about the kid, but she didn't know. Um, and he didn't, she didn't say the name, thankfully. Um, but Burke, why is she do like, if Howard is not tripping on the crime, yeah, sometimes the state or police pursue crimes, even though people don't want to, but at the same time, I think this is a little more personal and I think she should kind of let leave it alone if he's trying to leave it alone. Or at the very least, why are you interrogating people that's coming out of his house? They didn't do it. So, <laughs> if you... She's was, obsessed. Yeah. She's, obsessed. she's do, trying to find more than his killer. I mean, you know, a shooter, rather. Um, because... If you was doing that, why would you be at his house? Like, the shooter ain't going to be there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And interrogating her, she didn't do it. If she did, why would she be back in his house? Right. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I think she definitely is going about it the wrong way because she's digging deeper into areas that have nothing to do with him being shot or his case. So, and how does she bring this lady in to have an open discussion in, a, in an interrogate interrogating room? That part has me like, what? You didn't pick up off the street, right? How you got her there? And and even if, how could you? How you openly interrogating her about and threatening her at the same time about Howard? That part just didn't make any kind of sense to me, none at all. Yeah, definitely. And then. I'm wondering maybe she has a record or something, I'm guessing, because like you say, she comes in as a barber. I mean, I mm-hmm. guess they figure Howard got a bald head, so what did you do? <laughs> Damn, you you scalped him. <laughs> you ain't a barber. You scalped his ass. Damn, built the top layer off his head. Um, so I don't know. I guess that ain't a good cover for Howard. She lined up a goatee. He already have a full beard. <laughs> it don't matter. You don't know if that's the hair she cut in Jay Nah, that's why she over there so often. She got to do the goatee every couple days. <laughs> She's manscaping, Jay. She manscaping. Manscaping. <laughs> he want that V. He got to get that V right. <laughs> But we uh, also don't see her boss like, oh, Bert, what's going on with Howard's case? Right. It's just love. She doing it on her own. And, right. It's, there's no, remember the other guys were doing Howard's case, right? And they basically were like, listen, we're just happy it's a miracle, right? She's mm-hmm. not on Howard's case. She's obsessed. Her head is stuck up his bottom, okay? Something's <laughs> wrong there. She got a hard on for him, and I don't like it. 
Who said she gonna get a bullet? Somebody in the comments said she gonna catch the bullet. Yeah, she next on my list. Camacho first. Now I'm putting Burke on the list. Mm -hmm. Now a couple people to... think Burke is after jukebox and girl in tech said Laverne might unknowingly let Burke know Howard has been trying to meet up with Kanan. Um, what you think now that she got that relationship with Jukebox? Um, do you think that they may she may get more information? Uh, Anti Mike said she trying to mess with Jukebox. Burke is a hypocrite. Um, Kelly, what you think about Burke and the Jukebox situation and what may happen with that? Well, I've always believed that Jukebox is gonna talk too much because. When Kanan killed her, he was like, you always talk too much. So I'm like, she has to say something in younger jukebox mode. So it could be that, you know, it could be. And now he got to let his father kill Burke because he got killed for his son. I don't know. <laughs> but, Jay, I like your cup. Go grab those mugs. I'm good, about to go grab mine, y'all. Hold up. It's a good looking face. I ain't mean to cut you off, Gina. Go <laughs> Go ahead, so, with Burke. I always thought that Burke, I can't remember the name. I'm so sorry, but shout out to you. I always thought that she was a hypocrite. I feel like she um, is using Jukebox to have a line in with that family because she automatically was like, oh, Howard, what's your connection with this kid and this family? So I feel like she always, you know, had that thought to keep Jukebox right there so that she could go and then it's like okay i'm helping you you help me mm -hmm. so, dale yeah. dale traverso thank you for the super chat fam he said mm -hmm. hey burke can question warrell about where he was the night of the shooting and mm -hmm. rock or marvin kills him for ta talking to police mm -hmm. what you think about that uh gina mm -hmm. warrell may talk to burke and Rock or Marvin end up killing him for talking to the police. Okay. I can see that <laughs> happening. However it goes, he still got to catch that bullet. They, they because go. he was doing way too much. And with no scratches. Ugh. Not one, I right? mean, that plan would have been, you know, it would have worked. But dude should have hit him with the gun. Right. Are you coming back? We see how the first two got beat down. And you just no scratches at all? Okay, y'all making me look bad. <laughs> go get it, Gina. Go get it. <laughs> bring him out. Bring him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly, what you think about uh, Warrell possibly getting questioned by Burke, and maybe that leads to uh, Warrell's death? Well. I, I wouldn't, if that happens, I, I could see it. And if that's realistic, right? That could happen. But I want Warrell to be dealt with other than that. But Burke is already talking to Unique, you know? So I don't know if she's going to go down the line. But um, I want I want them to find out. I want them to find out, the family, about Warrell. And I want them to deal with him like a savage. He's remember, Oh, wait. So he's on my list, too. I got three on the list now. Camacho, Warrell, then Burke. Okay. Because if Juke tell Burke, Burke gotta go. They can't have her about. It's gonna it's gonna kick up some drama. But if Juke ends up telling Burke, Burke gotta go. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, that yeah, she definitely playing a crazy game. Um one thing I'm wondering is what kind of game is Marvin playing following Little bony Tony around and looking at where them lips been. Kelly, what's up? What? Why is he following Tony? And what the hell is he on doing this? What's his plan? So you know, I got a question for every episode. This is the question for this episode. Why is Marvin following Tony all of a sudden? Right? Is it because he got some spare time because Rock is out of town? Um, because it didn't happen any other time. I just don't. This is your question, Marks J. I just don't know. It just. Hopefully, they don't take too long 
to bring that the answers out for this one because I'm lost. I have no answers for this. I'm questioning it like everybody else. Okay. What's he about to do to her? Threaten her? Yoke her up? Blah, blah, blah. He, 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 he can't kill her now. <laughs> well... That would that would be a mistake. It looked like he don't he don't need to. She not uh, she thinking me. about him or talking. Right, Gina. Why you think he's following her? And what what is this leading up to? What do you think? It looked like she living her best life uh, mm-hmm. in the five hundred bins over here, living in the mansion. Uh, what you think, Gina? What's what's Marva's plan? He could possibly feel a way about her living that best life. Because it's like, okay, you hung me out here to dry, and then you get to just go on and be happy, little princess. Right. So maybe, you know, he is trying to tie up that loose end. But since he got eyes on him, I don't want him to try to make no move on her, at least not right now. Right. That would be stupid. Uh, Girl in tech said Marvin is probably following Tony to make amends after the therapy. What do you think? Okay. That's good thinking. Okay. That's good. I like that I didn't one. Think about that, yeah. Because I, didn't think I really it. don't want him to kill her. I can't. You know, it. It's, it would be a waste. You know, she done moved on. And she's not threat. She's not an immediate threat to him right now. You know, mm-hmm. she got. She's protecting herself. Once she's protecting herself, then she's protecting him at the same time. I just. I mean, if they if they flip it like you know he's trying to make amends, I'll I'll take that. I won't be too you know I won't be too ruffled about that one. But um, do you think he, that he's in love with her still? That's what Sir Classic says. No, he'd have cuddled with her if he loved her. I remember he was like, Ugh, "Black men don't cuddle," so and I also, he wasn't even giving her no love. I want to clarify because last night I said you know she was the original snitch, which she was. Mm-hmm. But she got caught up because she had the work on her. Right. And so she had to talk to the cops, really, to get herself a better deal. Right. So, yeah, she was going to tell on him so that she wouldn't. She was facing time. Right. right. But now we see that her life is totally elevated. She's not in that situation no more. So she really is no threat to him mm-hmm. any longer because it's not like she's popping and, you know, at risk of facing more time. So, right. yeah, I think you should just... I like to make amends. Yeah, that, I didn't think of that one. That's a good one. That's. Good. I don't know, but I'm still, I'm still up, uh, you know, on the making amends part because it's like, I, I just, this part is just so confusing. But I hope he doesn't kill her. Mm-hmm. Because if he kills her, then he gonna get the heat on him. Yeah. What do you think about this cop following Marvin? Uh, will we see? some more continuation of this in the next episode because we left off. We don't know what happened um, with this. Did he pull him over again or what? Did he just mind his business? So, Gina, what you think? Is there going to be some continuation to this next uh, episode or no? As long as Marvin is out there, that cop has all rights to follow him around and do all of that because what are you here for? Now, that cop can't come out to Queens. He can't cross the jurisdiction. So, as long as he's out there, though, yeah, he, he most definitely could tell him and do all of that because you look suspicious to me and I'm doing my job. Right. And it's a, you know, uppity neighborhood. So, it's, um, but is was it the same cop? Do we know that for a fact? We didn't see his face, I don't think. But right. the chances are. It's the same cop, but we didn't verify it. Okay. Because he had the big long, unless the other side of the vehicle has the, the big long, um, oh gosh, county name on it. And this side just has the little uh, logo on the car door. Then it'll be a different, If it, then it'll be a different um, cop, but that's not unheard of. You leave from in the town part, and then when you go to the residential part, the guy who's protecting the gated community now, he mm-hmm. coming up on you too, you know. But the the emblem on the side of the car is different, unless the, unless the uh, the emblems are different on each side. Okay, um, I don't know that area and how that mm-hmm. cop car would look or not look. So 
I, I can't speak to what it would or wouldn't be. Um, as long as he's out there, he sticks out because you don't have no name and nobody. You don't know nobody out there. So it's like if they come to you and be like, okay, what's the reason you're out here? It's not like, oh, I'm going to see Sam. Right. That's why I'm out here. I was going to see my friend Sam. Well, what's the address? You don't have one. Right. Or you don't have you don't got a chick in the car and y'all sightseeing the big houses and stuff like that. Nope, it's only you. Put what with a high top fade and gold chains. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ninja rich. <laughs> right. So we'll see what happens. I think that uh we will see a continuation of what happens with that, whether mm-hmm. he gets pulled over or not. I guess if if we don't see a continuation, he didn't get pulled over. But uh, I do think that we will see what happens with this. They ain't going to just leave it like that. Um, so we'll see. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about Kanan uh, after the experience of damn near getting killed by them uh, pizza eating uh, <laughs> pizza eaters? And getting tossed in the corner like uh, dirty draws. Do you think that uh, he he gonna be a beast? Are he gonna change? More aware? Where where do you think Kane ahead is right now, uh, Gina? Where where do you think after he coming back getting thrown thrown in the corner like dirty draws over here? <laughs> uh, when I seen him fling him like that, I really did not like that. Like leave the poor child alone. I know. He can't catch a break. This morning, he was sleeping peacefully in his bed. His mama said, we going over here. And now I'm being tossed around the room like a sack of potatoes. No, let him get a damn break. But um, I think, yes, we are seeing the change that is going to eventually be Big Canaan, adult Canaan. Because the life that this kid is living and up against, it's, it's forming right here, right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Kelly, what you think about him and and how he got tossed and and all the stuff he went through and burying the body. This was a hell of a camping trip. Uh, <laughs> what kind of impact is this going to leave on him and his future? Uh, Malik Jackson said he going to have his head on the swivel, especially after Famous got roped up. Uh, what you think about him now? Well, I do believe that it's definitely fuel in the fire, but I don't think it's from the actual event that happened. It's because his mom is putting him in danger and she's not protecting him. As much as she's saying she's protecting him, she's not protecting him. Like Gina said, she took him out of his bed in the morning for some glizzies and s'mores. And all of a sudden, you, you know, you 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 getting harassed and it, remember so when I saw the the clip I try not to look at the clip until right before I watch the show because then I, my head starts going and could it could have should have woulda you thought that that guy could have been like a family member of hers freeing through the window right the door to the store you didn't think it was the Italians that were you know I I didn't see that happening or anybody thought, that's just there. Right, so yeah. somebody maybe in the neighborhood of her family member. It wasn't even her people protecting her. It was this racist bum, right? So Rock is not protecting him, and now he's realizing that dude was related to some issues going on with his mother. Right. I agree, Kelly. Right, so I think that it's, it's having him changing because he's realizing his mom is the original bad guy. Yeah. Right. I like Rock apart from Kanan's mom. I don't like her as Kanan's mom. Everything else, yes. I'm here for the Don Rock. But other than that, Kanan's mom, oh my gosh, awful. I agree yeah. as far as the trailer, because the way that, you know, they showed it is like, you know, I told you to stay away from these type of girls. Right. And then you see the man peering through the window. So mm-hmm. it would probably put it in your head that, oh, you know, that's a family member and she's that type of girl. But no, this dude was mm-hmm. just being nosy, you know, minding his business, full of hate. Mm-hmm. Full of hate. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I think uh, one point that you made up, Kelly, is that this right here, he going to realize all of this is because of her. And it had nothing to do with me. And so I think he going to realize that he can't really trust her. She she lies and has a lot of secrets and his life is in danger and is the reason it is the way it is because of her. Um, yeah. Yeah. He said that he was going to take this throne when she was asking, you want this life? He said he do. But he's so young. I don't even think he realized what he's getting himself into. Um, so I don't know. Um Lex- well, Jay, I got a question for you. Okay. Do you think Kanan said that he's he wants to be in the game now because of the little action he got at Famous Spot with the girl? Yeah, that could be it. I mean, he, he felt like the man, got treated like the man on his little level. It felt good. So he for probably me, like, me- hey... He wanted to be that type of guy. He wanted to be in the game, too, because of Davina. Remember? Everything apart from the girls, he didn't want it. But when it came down to the girls, he wanted the street life. Right. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the girls in the street life, look at little fast-ass little mama putting the gun in his hand. We all knew that something was up with this next-door neighbor mama. What do you think now, Gina, we see next episode she going to be putting a gun in his hand. Uh, what do you think about that, Gina? I'm disgusted with her as well. Because whether this is your child or not, you have a child in the same age group. You were sitting up there letting him entertain your daughter. You left your daughter in his company. So if it does take a village, and even though it's not your child, all children should be protected. And the fact that you would give this child a gun and send him out to the street to do God knows what with it, you only know what comes behind that. This kid could get killed, this kid could go to prison. And you're just so willing to be a part of that. Disgusting. Disgusting, yeah. for real. Kelly, what you think about this woman and giving Kane in the gun? Is Kane ain't gonna try to get with her? Does she see a little dope boy she can manipulate? What's up with what she doing with this boy? It's the manipulation for me, Jay. That's the part that's pissing me the hell off, okay? These parents manipulating these kids into the into the bangarang. It was it was about to come out tonight, Jay. It was about to come out today. Because that's what Rock did when she made him attempt to kill his father. She she went spiraling in onto the roller coaster of manipulation after that. Now this this friggin' lady, you knew she was up to no good. She let her daughter go into the lion's den. She saw they were partying. She ironed down a little boy. She just dirty and have no shame about herself. And I I, I, can't, I can't even surmise what's going on with them and this and this gun. I'm disgusted. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, Dale Traverso said I thought Palomar was a ghost mother, and that Kanan turns her into a fiend later. If that was the case, that mean that girl would have had to been ghost sister. Uh, you never heard about a sister, right? No, nah, I never but, heard about that either. What do you ladies think about Dale's uh, theory right here? Kelly? Uh, well, for, first off, the, the comment that was before that, that could be true, that that gun could have bodies on it. Like, you're not taking no... You know, we never had legalized... Um, firearms in new york city so you know what that stuff is passing around what's really good right so it could have bodies on it you don't know because we don't know what angle this mother is coming from so that's number one as far as you know the speculation for for ghost mom and all of this i just i want to let that unfold for myself i don't let my head go too far when it comes to ghosts tommy no breeze (laughs) you know i'm just patiently waiting for that to come up because you know how much if I could think about if I go in that rabbit hole Jake you know I'll never come out the rabbit hole if I go there <laughs> alright Gina what you think about uh, this possible theory that Palomar is ghost mother and Kanan turned her into a fiend I agree with Kelly I'm not going to jump to conclusions and I'm just going to wait to see when they you know if they introduce his mom 
But what I will say about Ghost, um, I'm going to go up for him all day, every day, because he was a man that turned around and he said, I don't want my son doing this. And we got these women that are just like, oh, join the game, have a gun, sell drugs, drop bodies. Yes. When mothers are usually the ones that are, you know, you got the maternal instinct. Like you want your child to do the best in the world. My kid could be president. What happened to those kind of moms? They ain't got no moms like that in New York in the hood, huh? In the power universe, Jay. In the power universe. Okay? Right. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, so what do you think about uh, the mob? Are they going to come back for Rock? Because she said, if I kill you, this will happen. If I don't, that will happen. What do you think? Is she right, wrong? Or are they about to just let bygones be bygones? And everybody sing Kumbaya at the campfire. Uh, Gina, what you think about that situation with the mob, where it is now? Well, it's definitely not going to be bygones being bygones. No. Because <laughs> I don't think that she's about to step off. Like, she wants the territory in Jersey. And I think that now she has it in her mind. At first, she was like, I'm not negotiating. I'm doing this. But now her son was put in danger. She's looking at it a different way. Now I do need to sit down and talk to you. And we do need to work something out. Because when, I mean, when she didn't kill the other dude, I was like, okay, yeah, that was smart. But when he was over there flinging Canaan around, I was like, oh, he don't want to go. Because he tossed her kid around, you know? He had a gun pressed up against her kid. Right. He's not getting on. But. She knows what he looked like. So <laughs> we don't know if she'll spin the block or not. Okay. Maybe not out there for cat skills, but you got to go back to Jersey. Right. right, right. That's true. Uh, Kelly, what you think about uh, what's going on with Rock and the Italians right now? Where, what's the future for them? I, I love this plan from the very beginning. I don't mind expanding on territories. I didn't think it was, you know, crazy and irrational. That's what you got to do to break out. You ain't going to do it the friendly way every time. So I knew in my head that Rock always had a plan on how she was going to deal with them. But as a woman in in any executive level, sometimes you just got to go in, you know, hardcore. And I think that was her, pro, her approach. I wasn't mad at it at all. The only thing I was not happy about you brought it up that they don't ever have backup no you know no security no boys in you know in the cut waiting just in case you know shit pop off so other than that i liked it and she told him she said listen me and your boss we gonna work this out so she already had her plan on how she was gonna do it they just don't know because that's how rock operate mm -hmm. need to know basis you know what i mean but she the same way that they had their claws because remember um the shooter told him, the shooter told Nose that no, no children. Because if something happened to the child, then boss man is going to send me back to put a bullet between your eyes. So right. no children. So they had their code too, and she understood the policy. That's why if she killed him, then there would be no room for negotiation. So mm -hmm. I think it was really thought out. Everybody's saying that she rational. Now they got the chance to see that she thinking. Because she yeah. does have a plan. So she's making movements to secure the plan. Because at the end of the day, look, like Gina said, and you, I love that clip. Oh, gosh, I feel sorry for Kanan. He flung him across the freaking room in the corner. Uh, you understand? Let me see somebody do that to my kid. Right? Man. I'm like, get off the baby. <laughs> <laughs> She's thinking about the bigger plan for the business. That's what you call an executive decision. It's, up, it's okay if you're out in the street, if you're in the office. That was a smart move because she knew that she couldn't have gone no further had blood been shed from on her part. So, and I also think Lulu's words played into her head as well. Okay. When he said, you know, they come, they're going to come for all of us. Mm -hmm. So he did put it in her head like, you got to think, girl. Right. Yeah. And then she saw that they was there with Canaan. 
So they ain't just, even though they was just trying to get just her and not Kanan, um, seeing that that wasn't what was happening, it might made her rethink some stuff too. Like, okay, yeah, Kanan almost caught it um, because right. of this. So, yeah. And then she went, you know, she saw Homeboy shot his boy. You understand? So, in real time, navigating through real time, all right, fine. We gonna leave this little chick alone because she was the one who came. She could have she could have ran off into the freaking woods, and that that guy would have knows would have done off Canaan, but she didn't. She came right because this chick that she didn't have no agendas or no nothing other than mm-hmm. to you know have a nice time with this little city boy. Right. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, that was yeah. She mm-hmm. good thing she did uh, go get rock because uh, it would have been over. Right. Um, now, uh, where is this thing? I just saw. You had a good, uh, good point. Okay, Dale. Dale been coming with the comments tonight. Dale. <laughs> he said, Crown is well written. He indirectly caused Nicole to die, famous to self destruct, and more rock and Lou distance. What do you think about famous and how he came up to Lulu? How Lulu treated him and the moves that Famous is making being sneaky. Um, Kelly, what do you think about what's going on and, and how fame, uh, Crown has been written? Well, um, let me first say that this was one of my top scenes this episode when Lulu just done his business by giving him the ultimate disrespect. Like, dude, you ain't going to do nothing with your little piece of piao piao, okay? <laughs> Nothing, and I really I, look. Oh, that was it. Okay, First, he okay, got okay. him in the face, and then he walked away from him. Like, what you gonna do with that little thing, son? You ain't gonna do nothing, okay? Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm I'm waiting for Crown to get it. I'm waiting for him to get it. But yes, he he is manipulating everything around him as well because he don't want Lulu to take over. And I get it, but he a herb, so he gotta go. Like, I wouldn't want nobody to come and just take over my shit, but. You a crackhead. Right. I, they, they're not showing him doing the drugs so much in this in this um, season. But that's how Lulu came into the play, right? Lulu was his supply. Right. So then you, now, now he came in to be a money man. He took over. So I get I get it. His feathers are ruffled. But you got to go. He's the Remember, he's the first one on my list. Oh, yeah. He, he's making some major mistakes with the wrong one. Gina, what you think about him putting his hand on this gun and they ain't doing nothing with it and how Lulu played him? Yeah, like we said yesterday, I feel like that was definitely a bad mistake. Like, he already knows that you're a punk. you already been letting him punk you this whole time. Mm-hmm. Now you're just a punk with a gun. That's not going to use it. Because right. he turned around and he was like, I know you're not going to use it. He told you. I know you're not going to do nothing with it. And turned his back on you like he had no fear of you at all. None. So yeah, I think that was a, a mistake. But I also want to say like, do you think Malik Jackson said Crown is at the point of no return with Lulu? What do you think? think I he- he's definitely getting there. He getting tired of him, you know, treating him any old kind of way. He told, he told old boy he had to do everything in his power not to laugh in his face. He disrespectful. Yeah, Lulu he heard that. But Crown is getting to his wit's end, but he can't afford no smoke because God forbid he do anything to Lulu, he know he got to deal with Rock, right? He has no options. Because any move he make is going to be a bad move from this point on. So he might as well just succumb. Give up. You you lost already. The fact that Lulu in your studio means that you lost. He can't make no moves. He got no moves to make. Mm-hmm. Because any move is going to put him in further further um, drama. What about he, he snitching? No. Uh, g- the comment good said Crown going to tell. Okay. Maybe he may be an informant. That might be the only move that Lulu the dope man. Okay. I mean, yeah, because he was copping it from him. Right. So he do know that, and he been using his money. 
Hmm. And we see that he's setting it up to the point where he's trying to get as many people as he can to go up against Lou as he possibly can to out him. He doesn't want him in his world. He feels All like, right. okay, you still you stick to your Dylan over there and I wanna be the music man. Even though I don't think that crown was business savvy because he wasn't paying bills, you needed him. And, but now he's like envious as well. Because mm. Lou has this passion and he's he's going for it at all costs. Dre mm. W says, Does Lulu really want to take over or just want to learn the business? That's a good question right there. Um, I think he was passionate about learning the business and being good at it. I don't think he really wanted to take over, but Crown is making it an adversarial situation, I think. Um, it's hard, it's, it would be hard to work with Lulu. Yes, Lulu has passion, right? But it's going to be hard to work with him because Lulu a boss, right? And he's telling you he wants to learn this thing, whether you want to teach him or not. He's telling you, oh, I'm going to be in this studio doing this, whether Crown want him there or not. So even, I think it's a bit of both because Crown got to work with him whether he want to or not. It what? don't matter if Lulu's good or he trashy. He have no other choice. He already got in bed with a murdering drug dealer. What you expect? Right. That's true. Yeah, I, I feel like the fact that they're not friends and they don't like each other, Lou definitely don't like him and definitely don't like him after he knows he's been in bed with this girl. But um, I feel like, in a sense, Crown feels like he's being pushed out the door. Like, you already barged in. I didn't want you here. Like that, like that. But you yeah. barged in and now you learning what I'm doing. Where's, where, where's the place for me at? So I do feel like he's and like, oh, I gotta good. stop this. I gotta put it into this. Because mm-hmm. Lou is making his way through, like he he pushing through, mm-hmm. and he's even putting rock, like he's even standing up to her at some points, like oh, this is on the back burner because I'm in the studio. I don't feel like Crown was passionate like that because he was getting high, partying, messing up the bills. money, right? So, like I said, I feel like he's envious, like okay, yeah, this dude is passionate about this. And he also has the back end to be able to get me out the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that track was fire, not so, Jay? I thought it was. So, yeah, Lulu getting, yeah. He, he gonna Tony's definitely was be trash though with those lyrics. Ugh. Boy, speaking <laughs> of the songs, what's gonna be the future with Lulu and Jukebox? Uh, he tried to smooth it over saying... You get the publishing and, uh, you know, songwriting credit. Uh, but she mad because that was a personal song. And so uh, what what is the future of their working relationship? Uh, Gina, what you think uh, is going on with with that and, and juke and that? I feel like from now on, she's going to look at him like with the side eye. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he, he can't really be trusted like that. Because the way that he went about it, it, it was behind the back and it was wrong. Mm-hmm. And not only that, she don't like Crown. She already was looking at him like, ugh. And he's the one that came to her and was up front with her, like, look what your uncle doing. So, yeah, yeah that I was think shady. That the relationship is not broken, like, the sense that it is with Marvin, but she, she looking at him like, ugh, you can't really be trusted like that, like that. That's the look right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, never saw, I know some people said that they felt like Crown was going to give her the song me personally I never saw Crown give her the song I always felt that it was possible for Lulu to give her the song because Cartier told him oh the song you got um, Zisa singing I don't like it she needs something different mm-hmm. and that's a good point mm-hmm. All so right. I never felt like it would be Crown I feel like yeah Crown was her on his side and that's why he went and told her, like, look what your uncle did. But Lulu always was going to turn around and do that because he sees it for this girl. Yeah. He just put so much into this girl and her blowing up. Dre said Lulu making boss moves, though. Uh, what's up, Kelly? What's up with Lulu boss moves with with what he doing with Jukebox and 
can it be rectified? Jukebox seemed to be the type to hold a grudge, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> to say the least. What do you think? I agree he making boss moves. It was the right move to make because that song, as beautiful as it is, would not have gone that far had he marketed it with Juke. It wouldn't have gone nowhere. They'd have deaded it as soon as it got out the studio. So it was the right move to make. It's just now that you're dealing with family. And in addition to that, you're dealing with her establishing the security in her sexuality. You understand? So it was ne it, it, that was just it was never going to be pretty. And he made an executive decision. When it, when it comes down to that, a lot of people don't like it, but those are the moves that have to be made. So it was it was grimy, and he kept putting his foot in his mouth, trying to explain to her or you know justify his movements. And you know he said it was wrong, but it it, it was a little lackluster. It it, it it lacked the passion that she gets when Rock talks to her. But she still gets communication from Lulu, even though he didn't tell her. The reason why he didn't tell us because he knew that she was going to say no. So he he knew why he didn't tell her. It wasn't like, oh, I forgot or no. He knew that it was going to be some beef. The way he had to do and You know, a lot of men do that, do what they got to do and then say sorry after. <laughs> they say it's easier to ask for forgiveness than to uh, ask for, uh, what is it? <laughs> Well, it's easier to ask for forgiveness, dot, dot, dot. Right. Easier to ask for <laughs> forgiveness than to ask for permission. There you go. Okay. So, so maybe right. that's the case. Um, but uh, we'll see uh, how it all turn out. I mean, uh, I think that they do have a chance to maybe work it together. That wasn't something uh, like what her and Marvin went through. Um so I think it is a chance for them to possibly get it get it back, you know, working relationship. What's up with Marvin uh, Kelly? Is he going to be able to finally get some, some role with Juke? Or is it going to get worse when he find out she talking to the mama? Uh, what do you think? Uh, this part was another part that I did like. Because uh, when the therapist, you know, spoke to him... She she giving him the, the subtle jabs, the threats, you know what I mean? Because everything is, if I go to the judge, dang, talk to me for real, for real. Why everything got to be if I go to the judge? But anyway, Marvin's going to be a better person, even if he do, if things don't work out with Juke. Because sometimes the reality is you can't you can't fix that that bridge after you broke it. I know everybody wants something to happen to see what happens like you know if they rekindle and stuff it, it just may not i would like to see it i want marvin to be the hero of juke because you know i still think something fishy with her mama but i want him to be there and he's getting the help that's needed because look at the one thing he chose to say that you know i'm having problems with my daughter because that's his big problem right now mm -hmm. he know he messed up he probably you know he don't know clearly he don't know how to fix it because he there's nothing he could do right now and we thinking about 91, stuff was reckless back then when it came to coming out with your sexuality. You understand? So um, I think that he's just going to get better. I just don't know how this better way of handling things is going to help him because he's a murdering drug dealer, too. He <laughs> needs that. Get over that. He's a murdering drug dealing family. Yeah, he needs those skills to perform his job. He get too right. nice. Giving away free crack to the crackheads. Well, I mean, that, that was a smart move. <laughs> that was. Get your ass out of here. <laughs> Dale said, Juke act like Marvin. Funny and cool one minute, stern and mean the next. Uh, what you think about this situation and what's going on, Gina? I agree. They do act alike. That's why they butt heads. Mm -hmm. But um, I like that they introduced Renee. Because mom definitely needs that counseling. And I like that, you know, even though when he first came to her group, she had to set him straight, like, you're going to sit your ass down. <laughs> so I love that she reached out to him, like, okay, I see that you're not communicating in the group. Let's do a one on one. So she mm -hmm. is showing that she is caring about what he's going through. It's not just like, oh, well, this is my job and I'm going to get you in the door and get you out and sign your paper. She really wants him to be able to come to terms with his anger and be able to be, you know, a good human. Mm -hmm. And I like that she was there for him when he said, you know, I'm having this issue with my daughter. 
But she's like, yeah, team manager, and he's able to talk to her. Mm-hmm. Keeping all of that bottled inside, it's no good. Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, now him getting the counseling, it's it's possibly a better way to come at you. Like he just been juke. I, I fixed your room, and I ain't see you in three months. And, and what's going on? But now, since he's counseled or getting counseling, he's able to probably come at her a different way that she probably would, you know, be willing to try to perceive. True. Okay. He could come um, and say, hey, I've been going through counseling. I realize I didn't do this or I should have did that or whatever the case. Maybe it'll help. Maybe they can reach out and get her to talk to the, the counselor too. Who knows? Um, Kelly, what you was going to say? He's not, he, he's relaxing. He's letting her get her space, which space is not necessarily always good. Maybe too much space is not good. Let me say that. But he didn't go and tell her I fixed your room. He waited until she saw it. Right. He's he's letting it play itself out. He's not really pressuring her. You know, you you know, you see him making these initial things, but he could have went and be like, "Oh, I fixed your room. Come home." Blah, 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 blah. No, he's letting it. He's letting it take its course, and I like that. And I do. I really do like the fact that this therapist is there. I just want to know how it's going to translate because clearly. He's compartmentalizing things as he wouldn't have been falling, following, uh, you know, homegirl. So Amazing. he's still focused. He's still focused. Yeah. He just wants to fix with his daughter. He don't want, you know, I know he don't want to be that way because I'm sure he regrets that move. Yeah. I mean, it was. He regretted it in that moment. Like when she walked out the room, like when she turned around and walked away, mm-hmm. he was calling her back. Yeah, so he, yes. he realized in that moment it was wrong. And so it, it didn't take him the three months to realize it was wrong. He knew that day. Right it just got too far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he took it too far. I think destroying that tape is what's really hurting her more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's not even just about them now. And it's about that. And then the girl is dead. You can't get it back. You can't recreate it. It's gone forever. And, you know, yeah, she wasn't really done mourning what happened when he did that. Yeah, so that that and really hurt me. Part, that's a part of the process, Jay. I so agree with you because mm-hmm. my mom, she used to leave me voicemails. And I used to be like, why on earth are you leaving me these voicemails, yo? And when she died... I went back to look for the voicemails. She had stopped leaving me voicemails, so I never got the voicemail. And then my sister was like, oh, I have one. Sometimes when I hear it, she says, hey, Fee. And I'm like, oh, I'm so mad. And that that does not make me feel good. Even just saying this story, uh, my chest is just swelling up because I can't ever hear that anymore. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know what it is that sticks with us until it's you know too late so mm-hmm. yeah that's that's one of the sad parts of life you know but we live and we learn we we speak and share this stuff and then maybe the next person don't make those same mistakes and you know let those right. type of things slip away so appreciate you for you know sharing that and uh yes. you know yeah definitely um, all right. Well, we about done for the night. I appreciate the hundred plus people that was here watching live. Don't forget to subscribe and uh you know, share the video and all that good stuff. Thumbs up. Uh I wanna thank you ladies for coming through with the great insight as always. And uh anything you are looking forward to in the next episode, Kelly, um that may or may not happen. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking for Lou to get at Camacho. That's what I want. Did you see his face when Famous yes. went blabbing? He he turned into <laughs> You know what I mean? I was like, yes, it's about to happen. Right. So I hope they give it to me next episode. But I wanted to ask the chat a question, right? I want to know, you know how you be so putting one for Team Glizzy and two for Team S'mores. 
Like, if you're taking me to the woods, you're not giving me no s'mores. <laughs> I, never thought, I never thought that that was an appealing something to eat. Like, what? It's for kids. Like, she shouldn't have been doing that. They He too big. I'm talking about, like, little kids. Boy Scout, seven. Right. What the hell is a sport? Like, where does that even come from? Right. I'm being busy all day. Yes. Even now, we have hot dog parties. My siblings and I. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Gina, uh, what, do you, uh, what would you like to see or possibly predictions for the next episode um i want to see what rel gets up with good one but also i want her i know we talked about him possibly talking to burke i'm gonna change my mind on that i mean that could still possibly happen but i want her to get that dose of reality this happened because you tried to be sneaky you didn't want you need to be able to come back to nobody. You wanted that day one. And in the end, you killed your day one. And this day one came back to bite you in the behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We remember, he also was like, oh, you know, I know people out in Jersey. And not only that, Unique got sent to prison because of her. And because Unique got sent to prison, he was able to meet Marco Baselli. Who is Sal Baselli's son? And in the end, he ended up with that New Jersey connection. This came from her. That's great so that, how you just laid that out. Rock that messing up. Absolutely great. Absolutely yeah, great. You know? I like you that. You are getting your work stolen. Your boy is, well, one boy, because they didn't do nothing to Worrell. But your man is getting beat down in the street. You got robbed twice. And the second time, they took the whole bus. They had to pay for that bus. Like, that's a rental. <laughs> so, you know. But, yeah, I want to see that come back around on her. Was she the Jersey did. thing a setup to begin with? Did it's starting to sound know, like it. I lie, you laid it out. Got a link in Jersey? Was it a setup from the beginning? It's possible. So, yeah, because they're working together. At first, we thought, oh, you know. Worrell was a punk and a backstabber. He was no loyal dude. But then after we saw them talking and everything, yeah, they set that up. Oh, that would be so great. I want that to happen, Gina. Mm-hmm. That was dope. Yeah. Y'all heard that here on the J Moore Review. <laughs> Sunday night, after power recap, okay? So let's see it happen. But don't get it twisted, y'all. Y'all heard that here first from our girl Gina. Mm-hmm. Yes, Gina coming through with that fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they losing money hand over fist, Lenora Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they, that's two shipments that's going. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -mm. All right. Well, we're getting ready to get up out of here. I appreciate everybody with all the great comments. Uh, My lovely co-hosts with all the dope uh, insight breaking down the show. And Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. Be back tomorrow at 10 p.m. And uh, everybody have a good weekend. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace. I'm out. Deuces. Thank <laughs> you.